Tony County Sheriff's Office Major Sharif Cholchol, Chief Assistant District Attorney from the Augusta Judicial Circuit Jeffrey Fogus, Senior Assistant District Attorney from the Augusta Judicial Circuit Fallon Sims. You might recall that the last time we met to discuss a cooperative law enforcement action with the Richmond County Sheriff's Office December, and we announced 20 federal and 7 state arrests. We're pleased to point out today that nearly all of those indicted federally have been convicted on those charges with sentences of up to 16 years in prison. Those are years that these violent felons will no longer plague our community as there's no parole in the federal system. We still have work to do, and the cases we're presenting today show that, together, we're getting it done. Today we're announcing indictments in a case that targeted a major drug trafficking organization that brought illegal narcotics from the Atlanta area to Augusta, on both sides of the river, for distribution throughout our community. Through cooperation and hard work by the Drug Enforcement Administration, the Richmond County Columbia County, and Aiken County Sheriff's Offices, and from other federal, state, and local law enforcement partners, including the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, the Georgia National Guard Counter Drug Task Force, and Sheriff's Offices from DeKalb and Greene County, including a father and two adult sons, who we allege are moving large quantities of cocaine, crack cocaine, and marijuana into the Augusta area. In addition to federal drug conspiracy charges unsealed this week against eight defendants, the District Attorney's Office in Augusta has indicted 13 additional defendants on drug and firearms charges and for illegal use of communications, in essence using cell phones to coordinate illegal narcotics transactions. They've also charged a deputy clerk of court computer to alert those targeted in this investigation. We're providing you with a list of all those charged in the investigation. Each of those in the federal indictment is charged with conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute and to distribute controlled substances, cocaine, crack cocaine, and marijuana. Some of those defendants are also indicted for illegally possessing firearms. During this investigation, agents seized more than two kilos of cocaine, 32 grams of crack cocaine, than a half million dollars in cash. Investigators also seized firearms, including rifles, pistols, and shotguns, weapons that will no longer be in the possession of violent criminals in our community. In addition to coordination with the law enforcement community, it's important to point out the continued success of the Southern District, or the continued success in the Southern District of our prosecutor to prosecutor program what we call P3. Through P3, federal prosecutors and district attorneys cases to determine in which venue, federal or state, the case should be prosecuted to reach the best possible outcome for the safety of our community. We would also like to point out that through P3, we're closing in on 100 cases that the Southern District U.S. Attorney's Office has adopted from the Augusta Judicial Circuit for federal prosecution. That's an extraordinary level of cooperation only possible through a great working relationship with District Attorney Natalie Payne, her Chief Assistant, who's with us here today, Jeffrey Fogus, and Senior Assistant, Fallon Sims. We remind you that indictments contain only charges and all defendants are presumed innocent unless and until proven guilty. We're also proud in the Southern District of Georgia that our office was recently ranked as prosecuting more violent offenders per lawyer than any other office in America. With an average of recently of 42 defendants per lawyer, we're prosecuting more than two and a half times the national average. As today's cases demonstrate, we're taking this fight to the bad guys as we continue to coordinate with our law enforcement partners to keep our community safe. This time, I'll turn it over to Sheriff Richard Roundtree to be followed by Sheriff Hunt and Major Cholchol. Thank you, Attorney Christine. Uh, I think it's important in the effort of, of cooperation, uh, as you mentioned, some of the agencies that participated. Um, I must start off by saying uh, what a tremendous job and how proud I am of the Richmond County Sheriff's Office. 
with narcotics unit and uh, support teams who helped uh, in this investigation. Again, in the spirit of cooperation, in conjunction with the Drug Enforcement Agency, Department of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Plumbing County Sheriff's Office, the Aiken County Sheriff's Office, the Cab County Hida Task Force, the National Guard Counterterrorism Task Force, and the Green County Sheriff's Office um, helped in this two year long in investigation. As was stated, 32, 33 now defendants have been connected to this organization, and I will tell you a little bit how we got there. Um, as Attorney Christine stated, um, throughout the course of this two year investigation, uh, we conducted over 14 search warrants, which again uh, led to uh, over $500,000 in assets. Uh, the 32 guns that you see present in over 10 vehicles that were seized. Again, how we got to this point, we started an investigation within our narcotics division in September of 2017, um, just based on a anonymous tip um, from the citizens of Richmond County, which is extremely important to let you know how valuable that cooperation of the public is. Um, based on that tip, we were able to identify the primary suspect and then were able to determine that the suspect was traveling frequently back and forth to the Atlanta area. Um, as the investigation continued, we were able to ID a suspect in Atlanta who we felt to be a distribution point for the subject in Augusta as he was traveling back and forth. Um, as the investigation further um, revealed, as you see from uh, the, the, Mr. Freeman and his family, he then recruited um, various members of his family, and all of them were engaged in the criminal enterprise of drug um, trafficking. We estimated um, that this organization, um, again, with Operation Snowfall, was bringing in approximately 20 kilos per month from Atlanta to the Augusta area. Um, at this junction, um, over the two-year investigation, we estimate that we have extended over 6,000 man hours to help bring um, down these indictments and these arrests. Um, of these 32 defendants, nine are still at large, um, two with federal indictment charges and seven with state charges. So as we kind of uh, attempted to arrest individuals, we will continue to take these individuals into custody as now their identities have been made uh, public. You will also see the importance of this investigation to the fact of how we tie drugs into violent crimes. As you will see, um, of the individuals, two of the individuals who are involved in this drug criminal enterprise have been charged in uh, two murders within Richmond County, one in 2017, one in 2018, and another uh, defendant also indicted in this investigation was also uh, charged with tampering of evidence in a, another homicide in February of this year. As you know, this is our sixth major operation, joint operation, as we stated three years ago, the cooperation of the federal and local um, agencies when we started off with the LOE, Lowest Hills of Everything operation, uh, the uh, <clears throat> Sex Money and Murder gang operation, the Hilltop gang operation, the South Augusta um, operation, and our latest uh, operation, Gunsmoke. Um, all of these and Operation Snowfall fall in line as we promised uh, three and a half years ago that we were gonna to continue to fight and not just uh, dismantle uh, criminals at a local level, but to disrupt major criminal enterprises. And again, uh, this, you can see the toll that it has on the community from the um, photos next to me, when you see all the members of the Freeman family, from father to son to brother, all engaged in criminal uh, drug trafficking in Richmond County, and those individuals are no longer on the streets of Augusta. And again, I cannot um, <clears throat> our entire team support um, units that we've done, the major investigative techniques and tools that were used in this case. Um, we couldn't have done this without our local partners and especially without the man um, hours and the, the resources of our federal partners. So again, Augusta should be extremely proud of where we are. The fight still continues, as I said before. This is never going to be our last operation. In one of my other previous uh, news conferences, we're getting quite good at it, and the criminals should be extremely concerned. Uh, well, I'll now uh, let you speak to Sheriff Hunt for some comments. 
just briefly, uh, I want to say we're honored to be a part of this operation. These operations are successful because of relationships with our local, state, and federal uh, law enforcement agencies and our prosecutors. So we are very proud to be a part of that. And uh, this just shows that the cooperation between agencies and CSRA is ongoing, and that river stops nothing. It is not a border. Thank you. As you've heard, the sheriffs and U.S not just here in our local community, but has far reaching effects across the state and the Southeast. So we're also proud to be part of the partnership. That's what makes things work, is when state, federal law enforcement work together on these joint operations, and the bad guys know that we're working together and there are no jurisdictional boundaries limiting us from chasing them. Um, and I'd also like to commend U.S. Attorney Bobby Christine for his initiative and in putting these things together and the support we get from his office in chasing these violent offenders. So, thank you. Before we take uh, questions, which we will open it up for questions here in a moment, uh, I want to tell you that the, this operation utilized every tool in the box across the spectrum of activities. The, the complicated nature cannot be overstated, and the fact that the investigation continues ought to be shared. We invite you all here because you can help us share what we believe to be a message of deterrence. And that's why the department pushes the U.S. Attorney's offices to share information like this. And I mentioned all those tools in the box that we utilized in this investigation. I will tell you that two of the sharpest implements in the box uh, work at the U.S. Attorney's office, Assistant United States Attorney Patricia Rhodes and Henry Sims, who are shepherding this on the, on the federal side with great impact. We'll take your questions. So how proud are you guys of the fact that you guys not only got all these people in custody and collected all those drugs, but got these guns off the streets of Augusta and Richmond County? Because a lot of times it's just just pictures of people getting arrested, but this time this is actually the first time I see the guns here and present. So how great was it that you guys were able to take the drugs off, get these people off the streets, and get to take the guns off the street as well? I think it's extremely important and a great question to note and like uh, our partner said, uh, Sheriff Hunt, you know, that the fact that there's no borders when it comes to violent crime. Um, these guns, even though they were seized um, in Richmond County throughout this operation, could easily went to Columbia County, could easily went to Aiken County, um, up and down Highway 20 all the way to Atlanta and back. Um, so again, like we were saying, that this not only makes our community safe, every community within the jurisdiction that we touch in this operation between here and Atlanta, we think it made it uh, much safer because these guns will never be used again in a criminal enterprise. And even though we know the amount of gun violence that we have, and some people say, well, um, that may just be a drop in the bucket, but that's a drop that will never be used again. And again, not just this uh, community, but every community from here up and down I-20 to South Carolina. And I think the public uh, count this as a win as we do. As the sheriff pointed out, these are illegally possessed and illegally used weapons. And that's a, that's a very important distinction. Thank you. Any other questions? How many people are left that you're still looking for to take into custody? Do you have a number? No. Nah. We have uh, two from the federal side and seven from the state side. Do you feel those people are still in the area, or are they back in Atlanta, or are they? Because, are you... um, so within the two years, some of the addresses that we had, um, leads for them were no longer valid. Uh, but now again, like we've made this public, for two years we've had to keep uh, most of this concealed to the fact because it was an ongoing uh, investigation, and sometimes um, that hinders us with involving the public because they're our best tools. Um, now that this information is going to become public with your help, uh, and again, with the help of the public, we feel confident that these individuals will be taken into custody. That's one thing that we do very well also. If we take criminals off the streets, once we have identified them as criminals, mm -hmm. especially violent criminals, um, that we'll be working as soon as we leave here today, and as we are working today, they're still actively seeking these individuals. And you mentioned that they came from Atlanta. What would you tell people who are coming to the area just to commit this type of crimes? Will you tell that Richmond County would not, or Columbia County or Aiken County would not accept that? 
Yeah, I think it, it goes all the way up and down um, um, I-20 corridor. Um, like I said, most of these defenders are low. Um, like I said, Atlanta was identified them as their major connection. Um, so I think in, only two was taken in, in custody in Atlanta, but the rest of them are uh, locally here. And again, we shine each other. We work extremely well together. Um, it shows that, um, how the corporation, how they come out on a Wednesday afternoon and say, look, we stand together. This is an operation for our community, not just from the district county sheriff office. We were able to, uh, again, move forward with it because of some concerned citizens of drug activity here. But the same thing happens in Aiken when we get gun smoke. Same thing happens in Columbia County. And when you can pick up that phone and call those little babies um, and you get immediate assistance, that's what the criminals need to be aware of. That's, that's our biggest tool. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, my last question was, is there any gang connection to this? Uh, people and the gang connections? We feel there's always going to be some nexus with this amount of individuals, so we're looking at it from that angle too. Um, as I said before, we still have ongoing investigations, and, and, and I keep saying that to the fact that it's not an idle threat. Again, this is our sixth operation. We still have more operations mm -hmm. in the hopper as we speak now. As I said here, three of these individuals out of 32 were involved in homicide in Richmond County. It's on another operation that we're working now, and, and some of those details will come out later, but uh, we're always looking at, um, you know, violent crime go hand in hand with drugs and with gangs. And we've identified that, and that's why we have these resources. Because we can't fight the fight alone. Uh, we are a very large agency, but we can't fight the fight alone. That's why having the federal partners and our local partners are, are essential. So, um, like I said, this investigation is still ongoing. It just, we just were able to reveal it to you today. It's been a two year process. Thank you all for coming and helping to spread the message.